Hello guys, ladies, welcome back to Audio Books. This is Point 11, your business development program. And I say to their all good friends that us, their growing goal. They come to see the thing, they learn there in every other place. The grace that come from such a discipline, the extra feel in the hands, the extra strength and knowing, all those special power yeah well from time to time begin to enter our life. Michael Murphy grow in the kingdom. Now you understand the task ahead, the thing of your business, as though it were the prototype for five thousand more just like it. To imagine that someone will walk through your door with the intention of buying your business, but only if it works, and only if it works without a lot of work and without you to work it. Imagine yourself at that moment, I begin your most smile inside, as you say. Let me show you how it works, knowing that not only will it work, but it will work better than any business he ever seen. Imagine yourself taking the potential by a through your business explaining each component and how it works with every other component. How you innovated system solution to people problems, how you quantify the result of those innovations, and how you orchestrated the innovation so that they produce the same results every single time. Imagine yourself introducing the potential buyer of your business to your people and standing by while they broadly explain their accountabilities to fascinated stranger. Imagine how impressed the potential buyer of your business would be upon being presented with such order, such predictability, such irresponsible control. Imagine the result of your business development program. Your business development program is step-by-step -step process through which you convert your existing business or the one you're about to create into a perfectly organized model for thousands more just like it. Your business development program is the vehicle through which you can get your franchise prototype. The program is composed of seven distinct steps. Number one, your primary aim. Number two, your strategic objective. Number three, your organizational strategy. Number four, your management strategy. Number five, your people strategy. And number six, your marketing strategy. Number seven, your system strategy. Let's get started. Number 12, your primary aim. The chief characteristic of volitional act is the existence or purpose to be achieved. A clear vision of an aim, Robert Agagiloli, the act of will. I doubt that by now you'd be surprised to find out that I don't believe your business to be the first order of business on the agenda you are. Nor will you be surprised to hear that I don't believe your business is your life, though it does and can play a significantly important role in your life. But before you can determine what that role will be, you must ask yourself this question. What do I value most? What kind of life do I want? What do I want my life to look like, to feel like? Who do I wish to be? Your primary aim is the answer to all the questions. Consider it from another perspective. I'd like you to imagine that you are about to attend one of the most important occasions of your life. It will be held in a room sufficiently light to sit on. All your friends, your family, your business associate, any, anyone and everyone to whom you are important and who is important to you. Can you see it? The walls are tried with deep golden tapestry. The lighting, the lighting is subdued, so casting a warm glow on the faces of your expectant guests. Their chairs are handsomely upholstered 
in a golden fabric that matches the tap tapestry. The golden carpet thing is deeply piled. In the front of the room is a desk, and on the desk, a light, beautifully decorated table with candles burning at either. And on the other hand, in the center, it is up the object of everyone's attention. A light shining on that box, and in the box is used. Stiff as you at the proverbial board. Do you see yourself lying in the box? Not a try eye in the room? Now listen. From the four corners of the room come a tape recording of your voice. You can, can you hear it? You addressing your guests. You telling them the story of your life. How would you like that story to go? That your primary aim. What would you like to be able to say about your life after it too late to do anything about it? That your primary aim. If you were to write a script for the tape to be played for the mourners at your funeral, how would you like to it to read? That your primary aim. And once you create the script, all you need to do is make it come true. All you need to do is begin living your life as if it were important. All you need to do is take your life seriously to create it intentionally. To actively make your life into the life you wish it to be. Simple? Yes. Easy? No. But absolutely essential if your business is to have any meaning beyond work. Because if your business is going to become an integral part of that thing, if your business is going to make a major contribution to the realization of your dream, if your business is going to become a significant component of your primary aim, you have to let the business know what that aim is. Aim is. And how can you expect to do that? If you don't know what it is, do you see why your primary aim is so important to the success of your business? We know clear pictures of how you base your life to be, how on earth can you begin to live it? How would you know what first step to take? How would you measure your progress? How you know where you were? How would you know how far you had gone? How would you know how much farther you had yet to go? Without your brand we aim, you shouldn't in that indeed. You couldn't. It wouldn't be virtually impossible as we Mature company, I believe, great people to be those who know how they got where they are and what they need to do to get where they are going. Great people have vision of the life that they practice emulating each and every day. They go to work on their life, not just in their life. Their lives are spent living out the vision they have for their future in the present. They compare what they done with what they intended to do. And where the disparity between the two, they don't wait very long to make up the difference. They go to work on the life, not just in the life. I believe it's true that the difference between great people and everyone else is that great people create their life actively, while everyone else is created by the life passively, waiting to see where life takes the neck. The difference between the two is the difference between living fully and just existing. The difference between the two is living intentionally and living by accident. Let me repeat one more that great quote by Don Juan in Galos Castaneda, a separate piece. The difference between prior and ordinary man is that prior sees everything as a challenge, while ordinary man sees everything as either a blessing or a curse. So before you start your business, or before you return to it tomorrow, ask yourself the following question. What do I wish my life to look like? What do, how do I wish my life to be on a day-to-day -day basis? What would I like to be able to say I truly know in my life about my life? How would I like to be with other people in my life, my family, my friend, my business association? 
associate my customer, my employees, my community. How would I like people to think about me? What would I like to be doing two years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when my life comes to a close? What specifically would I like to learn during my life, spiritually, physically, financially, technically, intellectually, about relationships, how much money will I need to do the thing I wish to do? By then, will I need it? There are just a few of the questions you might ask yourself in creation of your private aim. The answer becomes the standard can be you can begin to measure your life progress in the absence of such standards. Your life will treat endlessly without purpose, without meaning. In that regard, your primary aim is the vision necessary to bring your vision to life and your life to your business. It provides you with a purpose, it provides you with energy, it provides you with a crisp for your day-to-day -day meal. That what mean that what's been missing in my business, Sarah, all but solid. Me, how could I have been so obviously to something so obvious? Don't be so hard on yourself. I said, we are all oblivious. Join the club. Let me tell you a story. There are one a young man who had recent, recently turned 40, whose life seemed to be going nowhere. Now, nowhere. Somehow, he had never crap or the career his life. Had no purpose. Collie had somehow eluded him in his first year at UCLA. He couldn't find anything to hold his attention, and he quit. He studied music when he said brilliantly as a boy, but his early adult years failed to find the conviction he needed to pursue it. Many different things attracted him, music, religion, mysticism, writing poetry, track, writing power fiction, money, none of them permanently. He took whatever job came along, and because of his natural and very talent, he did whatever he did well. But even then, none of the job turned into anything with a failure, at least not a teacher that attracted him. After leaving college at midterm, he drove to New York City to study art, quickly changed his mind, and joined the army, which sent him to Korea. His father died suddenly, bringing him home to care for his mother and two younger siblings. Sometime after, he met an exciting woman, took off to Europe where they traveled from country to country on a motor scooter and where he played saxophone and two religious speakers on the street in front of Casitro to earn enough money to eat, finally out of money and try out again. He and his women friends were repatriated by the U.S. government and returned to New York City where he contracted to try the New York City yellow cab to L.A. L.A. referred to Los Angeles to deliver it to its new owner. When he was 25, the married had two children moved to San Francisco where the young man sold encyclopedia for a living play saxophone on, on occasion and become over time less young. The life was a running battle eventually after one, two, many rages about his wife's abuse of alcohol, her infidelity, and his lack of purpose. The whole thing came tumbling down into divorce. He immediately met a much younger woman whose eye designed like his ex-wife didn't, who read his poetry and it was tight by it, who listened to his music and was and were awed by it, were satisfied just to sit by his side, no question asked. And though he continued to sell in encyclopedias, though his heart felt need for connecting with something that smack of purpose continued to paint him privately throughout all of this, he like took a more positive turn with his new young women, women who eventually became his second wife. 
He went back to college, left the book business study, contracting, and construction, so they could work with his hand rather than his mouth, move with his new willing wife to Southern California and manure himself into framing job from which he was fired time after time until he learned how to pull it up. By this time, he was a man in his late 30, suddenly beginning to do work that he 20 years younger than him did. They regarded him on the job as something of the freak, freak. His beard by now was down to his chest. His hair hung down over his shoulders. He wrote poetry at night, played jazz on the weekend, ate burrito with the Mexican on the job, smoked dope, dope in the evening, and dreamed grassily about the future when he and his young wife would buy 20 acres in Mendocino country, build their own house with their own hands, raise a family, and have his two girls from his first marriage move in with them when everything was ready. They had a tiny one-bedroom house in San Santa Ana, California, to people to call a pickup and along with their tip their name down a little black poodle named Murray. They live in the same steaming desk that seemed at the time close to what the perfect life must be like. But of it all good thing, this too came to an end when a young man turning older pursued by the demons or some indefinable news decided to move back, not now that they had their act together, save up enough from leaving the rice, life hand grasped, grasped it and, and snarly from honest Work body brown and beautiful from putting his muscle on the line, brain filled with the poetry he had written, the music he had renewed, and the trope he had smoked, throwing that it was time to become the contractor he had set out to become three years be before, and that all it would take uh, was one sizable cake together moving to work what he knows would be the fine resolution of up to now Dragdy suit. He and his wife and his great name Don and his poodle name Murmurai, plus whatever else they had accumulated in the few years he spent working with his hand rather than his mouth in Southern California. Hull it all up in 52 Kobe pickup and moved back to San Francisco they had come from not that long before. It was then that the big shift took place and unpredictable happened. Our now 38-year-old hero and his young wife, along with the dog and the pig, were invited to move to temporarily really with his sister and her husband wife, negotiating the pur pur purchase of their Mendocino acres. His brothers-in-law had the idea that the hero would do well, consulting in the area in which he was tested expert, sale with his advertising agency, high-tech small business client until side time occurs that the hero settled down with his young bride on the Mendocino acre to follow his true calling. Understand? Everyone knew that he was going to happen. Nobody doubted it full of robust idealism that had marked his joyful passing. He was without any doubt whatsoever going to rely on his vision. The 20 acre were all but his. It simply required the doing, of course. There were also the contractor license and the money, but no one thought that any of that would prove insurmountable. After all, he was a man who had lived a life that battled, baffled, good reason. Whatever he chose to do, he did. Whatever he did, he was good at. No matter that when he did it, he grew tired of it. He chose to do that too. 
To his friends and his family, he was, if not unexplainable, certainly someone to be noticed at times in amazement, and at times with pity, but never without awe, because who knew what his man was going to do next? And somehow, they all in their own private way, and why envy him? Can you believe that they envy him because he seems so free, despite the perpetual trouble he found himself in, despite his lack of direction, despite his whimsical and sometimes dangerous philosophy? There was no denying it. This man, although getting older, sometimes precipitously were living a romantic adventure, the right movie about, or if not that, a pitiful stupidity. By everyone's standard, he was living pretty close to the age. He guy on the cast of middle age with a long beard, a young wife, two dogs, and pick up without home with their own living with family, searching for property they couldn't possibly afford with hardly a dough in his head that everything was wrong or at all with these pictures about to step on those moving stairs to somewhere that he was totally unprepared for. And take the step he did. And it was a stunner. He was saying to his brothers in law, good intention suddenly set a trip in a world that could have been another. Planet for all he knew in Silicon Valley, calling on teachers who owe businesses who name he couldn't even pronounce at first attempt making stuff he did, then even know it existed. He was dumbfounded by magnitude of his ignorance. Then yet something called him to stay. They asked him, how can I help? How can you help me? He answered, I don't know. They asked him, what do you know about my business? He answered, nothing. You look at him for a long time. They looked at him for a long time, he said, and looked back and just thought. They said to him, why didn't why don't you come back after you had some time to think about it? He said he would and he did because he knew something but were there. Understand he's a guy who had been selling encyclopedia to people at night in front of their television set on the dining room table watching their faces suspiciously regard him as someone who came out of the night until he spread out the encyclopedia and vividly color panel that show all the books Graphi graphically align the maps, the transparencies of the human body, the endless list of topics of wonders the world will help from them in their ordinary life, the promise to their children, even their children to come, of education, of knowledge, of information, long before the information age had arrived. Here, their eyes would awaken, listen, lining up to all this colorful picture of what was possible, and now, almost within the reach, pending a decision he had done that late at night, grinding away in front of Frank and Mike, until finally Frank, with his luck red, would say sort of convertly, Well, Mark, what do you think? What do you think? Think we should do it. And he would sit there, our thirty something hero waiting without a moment, without a whisper or encouragement to move, let alone. Okay, thank you guys, lady, for your listening to my audio book. See you next audio. Thank you for your watching, and don't forget to have subscribe in order to get more video. Yeah, thank you.